Song so much it brings back so much nostalgia. Wait, wait, hold on. One, one more, one more. <laughs> I am a certified Garfield fan. So, why did I have to wait so long? I have been around for a longer time than probably you, and with the release of the Garfield movie starring Mr. Mario Star Lord Chris Pratt over here, I knew I needed to talk about this movie, whether it was bad or not. And thankfully, this movie is actually all right. Even better than alright, because this movie is actually pretty good. But for some reason is getting panned and is being made fun of when in reality it really shouldn't and deserves a lot more credit. But what are people getting wrong with this? And why is this movie actually better than what most people are thinking? And being a Garfield fan and remembering watching the Garfield show and reading some of the comics, like when he used to look like this, I 100% believe that the Garfield movie deserves more credit than it's being offered. I know where you live. So something pretty interesting is that I actually was looking forward to this movie, because not only was it made by Sony who produced the Lego movie and the Spider-Verse films, so I was a little excited, still had them at a reasonable expectation. Glad to say that I came out feeling satisfied in a comedic sense and in the sense of how it was pretty heartwarming at times. I don't think this movie is perfect and actually isn't that well of an adaptation of Garfield, but I will admit that it is still a fun time, and is actually a pretty good movie when you remove that this movie is Garfield, because this is not Garfield. As usual when he's in movies, it's the Chris Pratt movie, just like how the Super Mario Brothers movie is kind of like the Chris Pratt plus Friends movie something, I don't know. So when we take the fact that this movie does indeed have flaws, I know, shocking, how is this movie still good? Well, I think it's because of what it's trying to do. You see, Garfield has always been a cartoon that has seen many mediums, like newspaper and all the way going to CGI live action. But at its core, it's always been a cartoon no matter what. I know where you live. Which is something that the Garfield movie takes into mind beautifully when it tries to make jokes like how the movie jokes with physics a lot. Kind of like a Looney Tunes cartoon, which is perfect for this movie because they use it consistently throughout so it all feels very fluid when they do use it and not out of place whatsoever. And at its core, it's actually pretty funny when stuff like this happens. Like, I laughed a couple times at this. The Garfield movie also uses lots of stupid humor to it. Not bad humor, that's a different thing, but stupid humor that kind of just comes out of nowhere, and the best way I can describe it is something out of the Lego movie. Not specifically like the movie, the movie is funny and has a lot of cartoony stuff going for it, which makes it very entertaining and makes up for a lot of some of the story elements. Which, you know, they, they aren't great and don't totally get excused by the comedy. But, you know, there is just a big charm to it all. Now, I am known for my villain talk, so let me just say that the villain in the Garfield movie isn't that well made, but her henchmen are so funny. Like, they have so much personality to them, and I just cannot get Roy Kent out of my head whenever I hear him. But back to the main villain. She isn't menacing whatsoever, and the most surprising thing about her is that her twist wasn't that she's Garfield's mom, because I really thought this is what they were building to. So I was actually really happy that I was proven wrong, because when you see as many movies as I have, you can really understand where stuff is going even when there is only small clues. Sorry about that. Anyways, the villain isn't that good or well written at all, but Vic, on the other hand, is actually written really well through one scene, and that's the scene where we find out what prompted Vic to leave Garfield when he was a child. And although none of this is actually something you can watch yet because it's not out, I can't put it on. Enjoy the gameplay while I describe. The fact that Vic left Garfield because he was trying to help Garfield was really sad to see. Especially when all of a sudden Garfield is with John, which rehashes the first part of the movie with a different lens. And I think it's really beautifully sad and really well done. And here's why. Vic is put in the position where he loves Garfield enough and tries to feed him by waiting to get a fish, which turns out to be small, 
but still something. And then all of a sudden he realizes that John may be a better father than he ever could be, as he is able to feed Garfield more in a shorter amount of time. And it's really sad to see Vic just abandon Garfield, but it's really beautiful because we see from his perspective that John will take care of Garfield more than he could. And this part was really emotional. And something that can be taken away from this is how to make an emotional scene that is described with no words and just music was something so special. Also, if there were words happening, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure there is no words that explain any of it because it knows its audiences, understands what it's trying to imply. I also think John is extremely underutilized in this movie. Like he's, he, the person behind his voice is actually really good at capturing what I think John would sound like. But at the same time, he barely does anything in this movie, which is so sad. He's such a good character in the comics and is mainly the source of like the comedic jokes that Garfield pulls, which is perfect. And I wish that they did a lot more with that. Although the high story is actually, I will admit, not like the, my favorite, but it is something that actually is done pretty well. And if maybe if they introduced John a little bit more into this movie, it could have been even better because there's just something about John and Garfield's dynamic duo and there's just how they're so like opposite of each other that it's really fun to watch no matter if you're reading the comics or actually just watching the movie and I think that they should have done a lot more with him I you know because he doesn't have that much screen time which is sad and as I said before but I think that he deserved a lot more than this and a lot more credit like how the entire movie should have gotten a lot more credit for I love this movie on a scale of entertainment and comedy because I think it's actually really funny. But for a movie called The Garfield Movie, it really doesn't feel like Garfield other than the lasagna and the fat jokes. I am very interested to see if the movie will make its budget back or get a sequel in the future because honestly, I don't know where to go after this. Also, the fact that this is the worst memorial box office in a long time. Furiosa is cool. And you know, I gotta say, I am very happy that the hate of my life normal was in this movie for not even a second and i gotta say if that isn't peak cinema i don't know what is obviously i'm kidding when i say that because who likes normal but i'm glad they smacked him in the face with giving him such a short time on screen anyways thank you everybody for watching i'm enchanted 